Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're taking a look at a very exciting upcoming sci-fi grand strategy game set to release later this year, developed by the folks behind the Long War mods for XCOM and XCOM 2. Terra Invicta is a game I've had my eyes on since before the start of the year, and it's one of my most anticipated games of the year for quite a few reasons. So, without any time to waste and while trying to keep references to the Expanse at a minimum, let's talk about why Terra Invicta is looking absolutely stellar. A tense setup. The basic story revolves around a simple premise. Something has crashed onto Earth's surface, and it has caused a variety of reactions from people across the world. Some are excited at the prospect of what is undeniably an alien crash site, while others are terrified by it and some see opportunity. Way off at the edge of our solar system, meanwhile, something is lurking. We don't yet know what it wants, how it can be used or harnessed or destroyed, but we know it's coming for us. Over time, the crashes become more frequent, and soon enough, first responders are certain that there are survivors of these crashes, and before you know it, you're looking at bigger and bigger issues, causing more polarizing responses from the people as they go on and intensify. You, meanwhile, are in charge of an organization, one of up to seven groups of scientists, political figures, various field experts, and more, and each of these organizations has their own set of ideologies that determines their approach to the aliens. The resistance looks to fight back and resist the aliens, while humanity first seeks to completely destroy them and anybody who supports them or works with them. The initiative wants to take the initiative and exploit the aliens for their own advances, while the servants seek to assist the aliens, seeing them perhaps as some sort of overlord. The Protectorate wants to save humans by appeasing to the aliens, the Academy wants to prove to the aliens that we are on par with one another, and Project Exodus seeks to escape the aliens by leaving behind Earth and seeking out a new home. As you can see, each of these factions have vastly different end goals, and each should provide vastly different play experiences as a result. You know, there's more than a few degrees of difference between putting up a fight and escaping to another solar system. This setup is extremely fascinating in my opinion, as it pits humanity not just against the alien, but against itself, something that I fear is all too realistic a circumstance. Each faction has its own interests, and they'll be acting as such, while also needing to cooperate from time to time. The organizations will look to infiltrate world governments and use their considerable resources for their own ends, and when things kick off, you're fighting for dominance among your peers before you're even able to tackle the alien threat. Before you can focus on this extraterrestrial harbinger of doom, you're dealing with the human element. Any good humans versus aliens story at this scale in my books really needs to be a humans versus humans versus aliens story, and Terra Invicta absolutely excels at that. Initially, I was concerned that the time spent dealing with other human factions would be a grind compared to the exciting prospect of taking on aliens, but nope. With so many moving parts, and with so much depending on good early moves, the initial stages of the game are just as tense. Your objectives will have some similarities across the board at first, as you try to familiarize yourself with a new threat, but over time, your paths will diverge, and your self-interests will start to take over, depending on which faction you're playing as. This manifests in a few very interesting ways. Right off the bat, you'll find yourself trying to acquire counselors to take on a variety of tasks, starting with investigating the initial crash site, all the way to stealing or sabotaging enemy projects, assassinating or turning their counselors, and gaining control over political entities. And that's not all they can do either, though with different counselors able to perform different tasks based on their specializations, I'd be here forever just listing out the various options of offensive, defensive, and evasive actions that can be taken. The counselors all have their own stats that impact how well they can perform various tasks, and between their skills and resources you invest in an action, you'll be more or less likely to succeed. Failure isn't the end of the world though, you'll always have a chance to make up for missed opportunities or to take away the successes of your opposition. Take for example how swaying political entities works. First, I say political entities because though things start as countries in our current geopolitical atmosphere, they do evolve over time to create new political unions and they need to be tackled as such in game. Now. Each of these entities is broken up into constituent control points, depending on how large the whole entity is, and to gain full control over an entity, and to gain 100% of the resources produced by an entity, you need to get each control point to support you. 
otherwise you only get a fraction. In order to gain said support, you might need to run public support campaigns, you might need to quell unrest, or you might simply be able to use your persuasive skills right off the bat to get the control point to join you. These control points cost influence to maintain and depending on a variety of factors, they can cause more trouble than they're worth, whether you help them develop or not, so you will want to be picky about which ones you chase after, as the ultimate goal with these control points is to acquire resources. Money, influence, ops, boost, mission control, research and engineering projects are all resources that can be acquired by holding onto and investing in the right control points. Money, influence, and ops are necessary for all your earthbound activities, whether you're inciting riots and enemy control points, or trying to instigate a coup, or simply trying to acquire more for yourself. Boost is needed to launch anything into space, as is mission control, while research and engineering projects help you advance in various ways. Apart from these resources though, once you have enough control over a political entity, you can dictate its foreign policy declare wars, build alliances, and lead armies into battle to help conquer more control points for yourself as well. The other factions will be doing the same in the meanwhile, but you'll rarely know who's in charge of what. Conspiracy theories and backstabbing are to be expected, and you can never get too comfortable as a concentrated effort by an enemy faction can steal away your vital resources within moments if you're not quick to react. And yet, Sometimes you'll need to work together. Research is split up into two avenues. Global research has top minds across the world coming together to tend to big picture thinking and large scale ideas, while council engineering projects focuses on finer points, often unlocked through global research first. Each faction is able to spend different amounts of their own research resource to bolster one or the other, and whoever contributes the most to one round of the global research gets to pick the next topic of research in that particular avenue. So there is an incentive to contribute heavily, but it's important to keep in mind that others might be reserving their research for their own interests, focusing on council engineering projects instead. See, when global research completes on a topic, every faction, whether they contributed or not, gets access to its benefits and the relevant unlocks. So, do you want to help everybody get ahead or spend more of your time with more specific and selfish research instead? And that's not all. Once you're actually in space, the infighting doesn't stop. Being first up there is a huge milestone and might give you an upper hand at first, as temporary as it might be. But it's not even easy getting to space in Terra Invicta, because space is big and hard. Terra Invicta makes it very clear that you're going to have to do work if you're planning on getting off the ground. This came as a surprise in my first playthrough, but I immediately appreciated the paced way in which Terra Invicta approaches space exploration because it makes it mean something. The fact that it takes effort to get there means that when you finally do it, you feel good about yourself. Yes, the technology for space exploration to varying degrees does exist in the game already, but that doesn't mean your organization has access to it. Yes, there are launch pads and control centers around the world, but unless they're under your control helping you organize or be ideally positioned for entering space, they mean nothing to your efforts. The first order of business is to acquire control points that help generate boost and mission control. Depending on how much you accumulate, you can start your push into space at different levels. Low Earth orbit is easier and cheaper to hit than a high Earth orbit, which is, in turn, much cheaper than trying to get to the moon, Mars, an asteroid in the belt, so on and so forth. The entire solar system and its pertinent details are modeled in this game, and while you can scale things up or down before starting a new game, playing at the default really gives you a challenge where other games might make things a little too simple. And not only will you need to acquire boost to get into orbit, but you'll need the materials to build the actual payloads and rockets in the first place. This is done through money at first, but some of the more complex equipment and elements require resources that can only be acquired in space. So you need to establish bases on extraterrestrial bodies where you can actually get to mining and acquiring some of these resources. So you can see how the game naturally evolves what you can do over time. You want to get into space, so you need boost, so you acquire the right control points. Once you're in space, you can use your orbiters to acquire some resources with the right technology and structures built, but to get some of the more advanced materials for more advanced construction, you need to actually build mines on other planets' surfaces, 
which in turn needs more boost. So you need more control points or more patience, or you need to change how nations are investing their resources. But you need to make sure you're not sacrificing other essential resources or the stability of the nations under your grip. So your foundation needs to be strong as you start pushing into the final frontier. It's not easy to get anywhere in space. It takes the right technology, time and money, and the further you have to go, the harder it'll be. But when the time comes to look at the predicted resource deposits on a distant planet and pick a landing site, or to establish a launch pad or shipyard elsewhere in the solar system, there's a great sense of pride and accomplishment. Custom Ships and Bases You can't have a space sci-fi game and not have ship customization, right? Fortunately, once you're off the ground, Terra Invicta allows you to make not just custom ships, but custom orbiters, platforms, and bases alike. You can build general purpose stations, you can build fuel stops, you can build defensive platforms in shipyards and mining stations or launch pads, you can build solar panel arrays and early warning systems, and you can build ships with all sorts of varying degrees of mobility, speed, acceleration, firepower, and more. Terra Invicta takes customization options very seriously, providing you with seemingly basic tool sets that unlock a plethora of permutations. To have a game at the scale of the solar system allow you to zoom into your individual stations to fine-tune their capabilities is absolutely mind-boggling, but Terra Invicta intends to introduce this level of complexity without bogging things down with too much micromanagement. You won't have hundreds of orbiters, for example, but maybe a couple dozen. Most of them will have designated roles and will rarely need revisiting. Closer to home, you might make research stations and assembly yards, while further away, you'll pursue refueling stations to help your ships get further. Most mines will be established with a preset goal in mind, and you might occasionally go back and upgrade parts, but you won't necessarily tab to each mine at every opportunity. This helps streamline your efforts while still giving a great sense of scale. There's just something really cool about ordering a couple of flotilla over to a rendezvous point in the void of space where a station of yours is going to refuel them before they strike at a target. Even just typing this sentence out for my script makes me want to just boot the game up and play. It really feels like you're sat in a war room trying to figure out maneuvers that will take months if not years to execute, so you better get them right. And that's not even touching on the ship customization. Completely different from station customization, ship customization will have you pursuing a huge variety of statistics with different intents, inspired by real-world scientific speculation and proper hard sci-fi. You'll have ships of different classes and sizes dedicated to different roles, and you'll swap out a huge variety of nose and hull weapons, radiators, batteries, power plants, thrusters, armor, and utility modules, all while keeping an eye on the aforementioned statistics. Acceleration rates, wet mass, crew size, turn rate, heat sink, and battery capacities, etc, etc. Not only do these things factor into movement from point to point, impacting combat readiness and how quickly you can respond to evolving situations, but they also factor in when said situations have finished evolving and an engagement actually begins. Epic Space Battles The aforementioned hard sci-fi elements make these space battles in Terra Invicta truly otherworldly. The preamble to battle, and battle itself, is such a tense game of chess as ships get thrown towards each other, using up fuel to maneuver while fighting or taking the assistance of gravity, and at such long distances, a miscalculation or sudden adjustment or course correction can turn things on its head. War at this scale is astounding, and the individual battles feel the same way. The War Game series and Steel Division always put a smile on my face when a tank would pop a shot and you'd see the round travel 2-3 to three kilometers across a vast landscape before scoring a clean hit. It's hard to imagine being pinged by something that's over 3 kilometers away. Now take that and multiply it by God only knows how much, and that's the distance that engagements take place over in Terra Invicta. And they feel that big. As you give maneuver orders, your ship's inertia, rotation rate, and acceleration determine just how they move through said orders, and you're able to independently adjust rotation and direction of movement, and you're able to move in all axes as you please. And when these ships fire at each other, you can see individual shots travel the distance to score or miss or get shot down en route. If you fancy yourself a real Commodore, you can try and lead battles in real time, but if you command more like a commode than a commodore, Huh? Oh, it's terrible. You can pause and plot your actions instead. 
Battles are a real challenge in Terra Invicta and when you take into consideration everything I said earlier, losing a ship translates into losing a significant investment in time and resources, not just to build the ship but to get it where it needs to be as well. Looking at what you're up against and appropriately kitting out your ships is always a good idea and you'll want to pick and choose your battles appropriately, sometimes seeding ground for a more optimal engagement, sometimes circumnavigating the enemy entirely, human or alien. You'll open and close radiators to help with heat management, you'll try and use point defense to protect against incoming fire, you'll hope to use special maneuvers to throw off enemy shots, and most of all, you'll put your patience to the test as some of the bigger ships get involved, struggling against their sheer mass to bring their devastating firepower to bear. But fear not, if all this sounds overwhelming, you can let the AI handle things instead and sit back and watch the fireworks. Either way, the pain of losing a ship and the joy of destroying one still applies given all the legwork it took to get to this point in the first place. So whether you command the epic space battles of Terra Invicta directly or not, you can still enjoy the fruits of your labor. Terra Invicta is an absolutely massive game with tons of moving parts spread across a literal solar system's worth of things to do. I was immediately impressed by its dedication to keeping things grounded, even in space. The application of hard sci-fi and real-world geopolitics is done in a way that remains interesting both theoretically and practically when playing. It's not just good on paper. And with the developers keeping mods top of mind, I expect we'll see some very long legs on this game. If you're excited for Terra Invicta, make sure to check out the Steam page in the description and add it to your wishlist. It helps indie developers out especially and it's a good way to keep an eye on games you might like, of course. And if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to hit that like button and perhaps subscribe to the channel for more strategy gaming news, reviews, previews and more. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.